Welcome to this really short video on the real secret to successfully upgrade SQL Server environments. Now, if you're a SQL Server DBA, you know it's going to be part of your regular task to perform upgrades, be it from lower versions of SQL Server to higher versions, or even as simple as installing a service pack or cumulative update. Now, this is really that relevant, especially that Microsoft recently announced the general availability of SQL Server 2017. You might be thinking of upgrading to either SQL Server 2016 or SQL Server 2017. But nevertheless, this is for you. I'd like to take a quote from Winston Churchill. And just by looking at the quote and reading it, you may have a gist of what this video is all about. Those who plan do better than those who do not plan, even though they rarely stick to their plan. And every time I do an upgrade of a database, I look at it from this spectrum. In fact, I came up with the concept of the up upgrade project timeline. This is something that I highlight. Whether you're installing a service pack, a cumulative update, or upgrading from a lower version to a higher version of SQL Server, I tell my customers to always treat it as an upgrade project, which means you have to really consider everything that you have to consider when you're doing an upgrade in terms of a project. I usually start off with what I call the pre-upgrade phase. This is where you perform your test. You run your data migration assistant tool. You run SQL Profiler to identify deprecated features. You fix your code during this phase so that you're ready to move on to the real upgrade. Now, this is really important because this will make up most of your time. This is also the, the part where you test the migration into a new platform or a different platform that is totally different from your production. It may mimic your production environment, but just you know, maybe just the database platform is the same and some of the configurations are the same and you can get an idea of how the database and your applications would behave after the failover or the cutover to production is complete. Like I said, this would take up most of your time. From my experience, this is where developers get together the uh, IT folks get together and really brainstorm about what needs to happen as part of the pre-upgrade task. Next is the actual upgrade. So you've spent a lot of time on the pre-upgrade phase where you've tested moving from an older version or to the new version. Maybe you've tweaked some of the code as part of the test reverted back, documented everything that you find out as part of the testing, this is where you do the actual upgrade. You list all of the steps that you, uh, you've identified as part of the pre-upgrade task, you run those tasks, and you eventually cut over. Now, for Database administrators, this is what we mostly focus on, the actual upgrade. But a lot of work has to be done in the pre-upgrade phase. Next, we have the post-upgrade. This is the part where you know, everybody has decided we're going to cut over. We're no longer using the old database environment. And of course, the strategies you are going to use in the actual upgrade will depend on how the results of your pre-upgrade determine the tasks that you're going to do, the recovery objectives that you've uh, decided upon, and the post-upgrade is where you've decided, hey, let's monitor this. Let's see what happens after the actual upgrade. The final phase is the stabilize phase, where you're stabilizing the environment. You're now setting up the monitoring tools. You're now setting up your 
performance baselines. You're now capturing information about the new environment after the upgrade. Now, keep in mind though that the entire upgrade project timeline should include rollback plans because, of course, nothing's ever successful the first time around. It is also one of the reasons why, in the pre upgrade phase, you define your rollback plan. What happens if the upgrade fails? How do we roll back? The upgrade project timeline is how I look at an upgrade project or an upgrade work, whether again it's upgrading from a lower version of SQL Server to a higher version, or even as simple as installing a service pack or a cumulative update. Now, I'm pretty sure with the frequency of how Microsoft releases versions, you'll be doing more service pack installations than you would upgrading versions. So the next upgrade task that you're going to do, again, whether you're upgrading to a higher version or just a simple service pack installation, think of the upgrade project timeline. This would guarantee that if you've planned the way from the pre-upgrade to the stabilized phase, it will guarantee success of your SQL Server upgrade task.